Hey guys, I'm all back in. Welcome to day two in our life of the Galaxy Z Flip 5. Today I'm using the main camera and utilizing the video portrait mode. I currently got this phone mounted on a tripod. So here's my current setup. In the last video, I just have it sitting in tent mode on a table recording the video. But then that results in a vertical video. I think for YouTube and content creation, horizontal mode looks better. So now it's mounted on a tripod and recording the video. I do like having the preview screen in front so it makes it a lot easier to frame myself and know if the video is still recording. Just having that red indicator with the time going on is very helpful. And I remember when I was using the Galaxy Z Fold 5 to try to record this similar type of video. There's like really no preview screen so you don't even know if you're recording or not in some cases. And the only way to see the preview screen is to open up the phone in tablet mode. But if it's in tablet mode it's very hard to one stand up and two put in a tripod so for the fold is more the use cases is more for watching youtube and playing games versus the flip the use case is more about portability and recording videos like these whether in whether you're recording whether you're recording tiktok videos or vlogging style videos it's nice to be able to have a phone that you can frame yourself and um see what you're actually recording so so far with the z flip 5 i do appreciate that it's much lighter compared to the Fold series, even though it's half the cost, I think having a light phone is actually a huge functionality. Depending on your personal preference, some people don't mind having heavier phones, but I personally prefer lighter phones, easier to take in and out of the pocket. This one folds in neatly, so it fits better in my basketball shorts. Sometimes, I don't know, some shorts have smaller pockets than others, I guess. <laughs> Certain phones I'm using, just regular standard shape phone, Galaxy S20, it sticks out of my basketball short, but this one fits in nicely, so it's a nice built-in functionality of a flipping phone. And for the portability, the battery life is actually pretty good on this phone. First day, I got about 16 hours of battery life, although I spent half of the days not having the not having the SIM card in the phone. Once I realized that, I finally activated the SIM card. And then, just to kind of compensate for that, I did a lot of video recording like this, so I ended up recording about 30 minutes of video throughout the day and I still got 16 hours of battery life, which I find to be pretty impressive. So I started my first day at 5 a.m. and by 9 p.m. or so at, at night, it finally hit the 15% uh, or 10% mark. So that's pretty impressive. It can get me from early in the day until the time I go to bed. I would consider that an all-day battery life. Second day with this phone, I spent all day using 5G on purpose. So from 7 a.m. all the way until 8 p.m. I got to the 15% range. So if you're on 5G all day, it does eat up more battery. So in this case, I only have about 13 hours of battery life. And I actually used the camera less on this day. It's just kind of interesting to see the toll that 5G actually takes on your phone. Actually, in one of the following days, I'm going to try to run on Wi-Fi all day long just to see how that impacts battery life. But so far, I've been pretty impressed with it. Screen on time, people always ask about that, but I don't usually like to go into details about that because it really depends on how you use your phone. If you're watching YouTube for 10 hours a day, you're going to get 10 hours of screen on time. If you have your screen on for half an hour and working for the rest of the day, maybe you have 18 hours of battery life and just half an hour screen on time. So it all depends on your day-to-day -day basis, how you go about your day, how you use the phone. So what I'm concerned about is just overall battery life. And I think so far, after a couple of days, it's looking pretty good. I would say it's better than the Z Fold 5, but I guess with the Fold 5, you're getting a, busy, you're getting a bigger screen, so it's gonna use more battery. And so, so, so far, I've been pretty happy with this phone, just in terms of battery life. Even using a full day of 5G, 13 hours is pretty solid and this is the first phone ever that I'm actually going to be that I'm actually using eSIM on so I'm partnering with Mint Mobile to make videos like these and in the past I have always been nervous about using eSIM just switching over to phone activating eSIM just trying to trying to figure out how all that work and all the friction in the US all the new iPhones they switch over to eSIM but this is the first Galaxy phone that I'm using eSIM with and I'm pretty surprised how easy it was to set up I basically just scanned a QR code and everything was activated right away so pretty quick painless and everything works exactly like it should and mid mobile is the largest 5G network I know every carrier say that but at the same time I think 15 bucks a month is a pretty good value for unlimited, for unlimited text and data. When you go out to eat these days, you get a bowl of pho, they're gonna cost you like 15 bucks. So if you pay 15 bucks, you get a whole month of data and text. I think it's a pretty good deal. So make sure to sign up with my link below to help out the channel and I can post more daily videos like these. And thanks to Mint Mobile for partnering with me on my channel. So going back to the day two, 9 a.m. Previously I mentioned I woke up at 7 a.m. by 9 a.m. just doing my battery check. And I noticed every time I use this phone with the phone closed, it gets 
awkward because then I always have to figure out how to access it if I want to check a notification. Typically, if your phone is open up, you always pull down a notification. But now, since it's closed, I, by habit, I just try to pull it down. And then I realize the phone is locked, so I got to figure out how to unlock it. And I'm going to hold it with my left hand. I have to stretch my finger all the way around just to hit the unlock button. Then you see this little icon to see that it's actually unlocked. I wish it changes to another screen or something, which is easier to see than this little tiny icon at the top. So once it's finally unlocked, you can pull down the notification panel and see your battery percentage there. So after going through all of that effort, um, after a few hours, a couple of hours of being awake, we're at 85%. Just a lot of effort just to pull down the notification shade in my opinion. I wish it just uh, made it a little bit easier. And as you, can, as you can see with the cover screen, if I'm scrolling around, it's easy to access the note. It's easy to access the widget if you're into those. I'm not a big widget guy, but you can look at the weather, your alarm, the calendar, and it basically only let you have four apps or so that you can choose from. And if you want to add more apps, it actually makes you open up the phone to do it, which is annoying. With the Motorola Razr Plus, you can do it. You can just do it with the phone closed. So I like the Motorola Plus cover screen better than this one. And I think this one just acts like a giant notification screen. And it's very annoying to still have to open up your phone every single time. I mean, if you're just using those four apps, um, texting, WhatsApp, Google Maps, that's fine. But if you want to use Snapchat, you see the notification, but you still have to open up your phone to read it. So it's very annoying. And I don't like just seeing this orange dot when the phone is closed. Because orange dot can mean anything. It could be a missed phone call. It could be a Discord. I just wish it shows me the actual icon. Because if I see what it is, maybe it's not important. Then I can uh, just ignore it. But me seeing this orange dot, it makes me feel compelled to kind of figure out how to check the notification. Then how to open up my phone. It's just a lot of extra steps. And it's one of the most annoying part of owning a flipping phone is having to flip it open every single time, ironically. It's nice, portable, and stylish, but it's not very practical. But I like Motorola implementation better because you don't actually need to open up your phone. You can check Snapchat and use every single app on here. With Samsung, you're limited to just four apps and it's just less customization, less, I don't know, just scrolling around is harder, using the phone is harder. It actually forces you to open up your phone even though you do have the larger display, which I don't really like. But this is my quick update on day two, just still getting used to the notification screen, just still getting used to the cover screen and navigating around that. Wanted to update you guys on the battery life, how, I was, how it's been switching over to eSIM, and just general updates around the cover screen. So far, I still don't like it. If I did not use the Motorola Razr Plus, I think I would appreciate this update more because it's much better than last year when you're just having a tiny screen. So now you get some limited functionality, but compared to the Motorola Razr Plus where you get full functionality, it does make a real difference. So for now, flipping phones are somewhat gimmicky, but I think having an outer display makes it very useful because just because the fact you don't need to open up your phone every time. But now you still have to go to that action and it's takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. You gotta dig in your finger, try to figure out opening your one hand, or you're gonna flick your one hand and hope you don't swing the phone across the room or drop it by accident. So all these little things causes friction and it makes the phone just a little annoying to use. <laughs> but that's just my general thoughts after day two. I'll keep you guys updated on how day three goes. Let me know if you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns in the comments below. I'll be sure to address them. Please check out day one if you haven't already. Remember to like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.